Saturday morning, friends. It is Saturday, December 15th. I am Letitia, and welcome to my channel. And today is my weekly update. Um, I don't know if this video is going to be um, just this one segment because it kind of, um, my plans for the Saturday morning kind of spiraled out of control and it ended up being like three or four things to show you to quite possibly 20 things. Um, this is going to be a trunk show of sorts because all of my, the majority of my whips are kept in a trunk. Um, a very large, a very large old fashioned type of um, decorative shipping trunk, but I use that to hide my whips so they're not everywhere. Um, so today, uh, this morning, my husband and I left out the house pretty early. We did some grocery shopping. Um, we just came back. Um, it's a little, little bit after 1 o'clock now. Well, we didn't leave very early. We left like 10.30. Um, but we were up early. We did some grocery shopping, came back, put it all away. Changed into my caftan. You know, I love my caftans, guys. Um, and so I am feeling super cozy and I decided since my two week rotation with Amtrak was up it's time to choose my next whip um, which I wanted to choose pretty strategically it's kind of the last whip of the year it's not that serious but this is what I'll be working on for the next two weeks and I'm trying to figure out um, what whips I want to work on next year I'm focusing on completing my whips so I needed to choose something that I'm going to not only want to work into the next year, but also something that I could potentially finish next year. So I went into the trunk and I have a whole bunch of things that I pulled out because one, I couldn't decide what I wanted to work on, clearly making the decision much harder than it needs to be. Two, I started simultaneously looking at, okay, what do I want to focus on for whips this year? Um, as I'm about to show you, Amtrak, working on Amtrak for two, week, two weeks, reminded me that when I focus on something for a good amount of time, two weeks is a solid amount of time to me, um, you make great progress. So now Amtrak has turned into one of those projects I'm going to focus on finishing in 2019. Um, so that's where my mind is. What else am I going to be able to possibly finish in 2019? I thought of blue Moroccan lace. I thought of, um, yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> I can't think of anything else, but I have things to show you that I pulled out of that trunk that could potentially be finishes for the year. I think I want to finish um, the Jacobian bell pull, but I just worked on that um, last month in November. So we won't see that again until next year either. So what I'm going to do, of course, is show you the whips that I worked on last week, including Tribal Monkey, Amtrak, and Desiderata, which is my Friday night high tea whip because that was my November high tea whip. Um, just as a reminder, although high tea is intended to celebrate new starts, celebrate your stash, because I'm really focusing on finishing out some whips, um, I'm choosing to pull out some of my favorite whips that really need some love um, for high tea. So I will work on that on the last Saturday of the month, last Sunday of the month, excuse me, and then on every following Friday night during the Friday night stitch in until the next high tea. Now, what I may also do, like I'll use the Siderata as an example, what I may also do is make that my next two week whip rotation once that high tea, um, once that Friday night series of stitch ins for the month is over, I might give it a solid two weeks after that. So that's what I mean by using my whips for high tea because I really give them a special amount of love. I work on them every single Friday and then add them to the rotation. So we'll see how far that gets. And I'm thinking about that specifically with Desiderata because I'm not far from a finish on that. I, I mean, I'm over the halfway mark, but because of the design of the pattern, 
quite feasibly can be finished. I mean, it may may quite feasibly be my first finish of 2019 if I give it that extra two weeks of solid love. So we'll see what happens. Um, let me start out with some shout outs. And first, I want to acknowledge um, those of you that commented on my video last week. Um, if you watched my video, my last video, in the spur of a mom of the moment at the end, just as I was ending, um, I decided to talk about something that Kate Kara from Case Cross Stitch mentioned in her um, most recent video about um, the young lady who plummeted ultimately and sadly to her death um, at her place of work. And I talked about my personal experience um, with suicide being the loss of my brother um, by his own um, hands. And I, I just talked about it. I was just moved to talk about it and talk about not necessarily my feelings about it, but just kind of put a call out there to encourage people to reach out to whomever is in their space, um, be it within their lives, within their virtual, like social media type of life, whatever the case may be. Um, I'm not going to rehash all of that. My purpose of saying this is to say thank you. The comments um, that I received, I am not, like I said, I'm not surprised um, that I said it in one of the comments. I'm not surprised that people um, related to what I was saying or so much appreciated what I was saying. I'm not, I'm not surprised by that because, you know, we're empathetic people, but I was, I, I was so moved by um, the number of people that shared their experiences, whether it was with their family or with themselves. I was so moved by that. And I just want to thank everybody, whether, you know, they talked about the personal struggles, whether they talked about, um, in the same vein, struggles with their family members who were dealing with depression, um, just talked about how it touched them, what I said. I just really appreciate those of you that shared that because that's what it's all about, making sure depression, suicidal tendencies, that they're not, it's not a bad word. Um, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It is a reality that can only um, be helped further by taking the stigma off of it and talking about it. So that's all I have to say about that. I just wanted to sincerely thank you guys um, for sharing. And some of you even said that you would continue to pass that message on um, to keep that, that notion of awareness alive. So thank you. It is truly, truly appreciated. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was shout outs. I only have one shout out this week because I have been binge watching this young lady since last week. Some of you may know her, but she is somebody that I subscribed to probably a while ago. Um, but I never quite got around to watching. You know how that is. Um, her video popped up early this week. I think it was on Monday. I watched it and I had to go back and watch every single one. I think she only has like 14 videos out. Um, Goldfishy25, Janae, is a young lady who recently graduated from med school this past year and actually is in my, my town. Um... Well, in my state, rather, she she's in um, the city, um, but 20 minutes away from me, nonetheless. Anyway, none of that matters, does it? Um, but she is a medical doctor now, and she is um, a beautiful cross-stitcher. Her mother is a cross-stitcher. I believe she mentioned her sister is a cross-stitcher. But what I love so much about Janine's video, like she's on pause right now. That's, yeah, I'm, I'm into it. Um, what I love so much about Janine's videos is she clearly explains her thought processes and any changes that she makes beautiful choices of patterns um, that we can all appreciate she talks about her experiences both negative and positive with framing um and i she's just a pleasure to watch just a pleasure to watch one of those people where you don't have to like look up all the time you can just listen um, and 
I just want to give her a huge shout out because I am now a huge fan. So I have a couple more videos um, to watch until we are fully caught up and have to part ways until the next video. But Janae, if you're watching, I adore your channel. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to give her a shout out, show her some love. The next thing I'm going to show you is my haul from this week. It's not a lot, but it would be a lot easier for me to show the haul before I go into this unexpected whip parade. Um, it's a cold and rainy day, but I have the windows open a little bit, so you might um, hear some sounds from outside. I'm one of those people that even when it's like really cold outside, um, I like to have some fresh air. But also because the way our home is structured, upstairs tends to get significantly high, hotter than downstairs. We have very, very high ceilings um, downstairs. So it takes a lot to heat up the lower level while upstairs where the bedrooms are, um, it will heat up in a second and it'll be like a sauna. So we tend to close the vents um, in the rooms upstairs. And because of that, I like to keep the window open. No idea why I'm sharing all of this when I just said I'm going to show you haul. Um, oh, because I said you might hear sounds from outside. That, that was a big share. That, and also I want to start off with haul because I received two things in the mail just today and I haven't opened them yet. I cut them open so I could share them with you, but I haven't looked at them. So that's exciting. Um, but it'll take one second because other than that, I have like two things. So the first thing that I wanted to show, I went on long dog samplers. I was enabled mostly by Jessie and I'll say why, because one of the patterns she showed in either her last video or the one before that. And the other one I got is very similar to one that she just recently worked on, but I chose this one because it has peacocks on it. And the third pattern that I got was because of Carol, um, Carolina, excuse me, not Caroline, Carolina, um, because there was a pattern that I was looking at that I was eyeballing, and then she put it on blast in Stitch Mania, and I was like, I got it, I got to get it. So I went on to Long Dog Samplers, and I got the PDFs. Um, so the first one is Opus 1. Um, as you know, Jessie is working on Opus 2. She recently had that in her rotation, um, which I love. I love these type of samplers, um, but this one had peacocks in it, and I never noticed that before. Yeah, there's one there, there's one there. I never noticed that before. So I got Opus One. Um, also, because of Jesse, and I think I saw this on the Sunshine Stitchers too. I think EJ got this, so I had to too. It was crossword. Love this. And again, these were available as PDFs on from Long Dog, LongDogSamplers.com, whatever Julia's website is. And this is the last one, Descending Order. I love this. I love the colors. And I think somebody actually called me out, and it might have been Carolina saying that these are your colors and they are the blues, the greens, the purples. I'm into it, but I had already looked at this before and I was resisting the urge. And then, you know, you know, so that's that. The only other haul I have are the two items that came in the mail today. Um, so let's start here. This one is kind of exciting because um, a lot of crinkling, it's coming. Karen from So Much To Love, um, I'm in her bag of the month club and I actually have here my very last bag of the month for the year. Um, and when you post a picture on Instagram and tag hashtag so much to love, you enter into a drawing to win a $25 gift certificate to her shop, to her store. Well, last month I won. I displayed um, this actually. This bag of the month from November. I displayed 
that one on Instagram, and my name was chosen. So I got a $25 gift, gift certificate, and she says, well, let me know how you want to spend it. Of course, I want to project that, Karen. Um, so I'm going to take this out of the bag. Crinkle, crinkle, chit chat and mingle. So what I chose from her store was one of her standard bags with sloths on it. My nephew loves sloths. I'm not a fan of the real animal because they cre they're creepy to me, but I certainly love them on a project bag. So I'm excited about that. And let's see what the inside looks like. Some pink X's, pink and white X's. Beautifully executed as always. So that's that. So I won a $25 gift certificate and paid a minimal amount to um, for the balance. Very happy with that. The next thing, and this is the first time I'm about to look at it, is my December bag of the month. Hopefully by the time this airs, everybody will have seen their bag of the month because I know a lot of people don't like, um, I'm smiling at what I say. I know a lot of people want to be surprised um, by what their bag of the month looks like. So if you have not received your December bag of the month, um, now is a good time to look away. And I will tell you when you can look back. How's that? So here is the bag of the month. Very cute. Very cute. That's fun, right? And there is the back. And let's see what the inside looks like. That's cute. So that's December. And as you know, or you may not know, with so much to love bags of the month, there's always something a little extra tucked inside um, that comes in a bag, usually like this. The bag is usually yellow, but this month it's red, and I'm going to go ahead and assume that that's because of Christmas. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and see what's in here. Um, there is a note that always comes with it. Um, oh, there is a pattern inside. This is the pattern from Twin Peaks, Twin Peak Primitives. I'm wondering if this, isn't this the, the twins in the Netherlands that, yes, these are the twins in the Netherlands that uh, Pam and Steph always talk about, Twin Peak Primitives. And this is the free pattern that we got this month. Very cool. There is always a letter. Um that comes with it. And I will read that in a few. And we get a charm every month too. Focus. Or not. It doesn't wanna. Take my word for it, it's cute. Little charm, and then there is something else in here. Oh, isn't that cute? And a little needle minder. Cutie patootie. And I believe it's that. So that's it for my haul. I'm trying to get all my little piles out of the way. So I want to clean up when this is done. So that's it for my haul. Now I'm going to go into last week's whips that I worked on. The first one is my Tribal Cat by White Willow Stitching. This one is a slow mover. It's going to be a slow mover. I'm assuming it will be one of my finishes for 2019 because it's my travel piece. Always stays in my car usually. I work on it when I work on it. There's really no rush in getting it done. Um, so this is the progress that I've made. 
using de Havilland thread and African violet. I'm still basically in his torso, the cat's torso, kind of going up the neckline. So yeah. And speaking of the de Havilland thread, Lillian did get in touch with me. I reached out to her through Facebook Messenger, so I have all of her information. So I am able to successfully send out my giveaway um, from my last video, which was great fun. And thank you for everybody who participated. Next up, I have Amtrak by Sampler Cove that I just caught in the zipper. This is what it will look like. Amtrak by Sampler Cove. And this is my project, my project, my progress. I have been working on this for two weeks starting uh, I don't know when I started, but it was two weeks and it ended, I guess it was December 1st through the 14th because I finished up my um, progress that I made on it yesterday. So in my last video, I said that my goal was to kind of close up that square um, so I could start on the next outer level. Um, and that's what I did. I finished up the middle square completely. And this is my progress. When I started working on it, and there is, I say it looks like a little stick figure band down here. This is the beginning of a flower. When I started working, it was just maybe three of these leaves down here. So my progress includes all of this outer, the stitching in this outer border. Um, so I think that was pretty good progress for two weeks. So I'm pretty excited about that. Loving this. Loving every bit of it. I almost didn't want to put it down. I wanted to keep going, but I'm trying to stick to... Come on, focus. Focus. There you go. I'm trying to stick to the idea of the rotation to see how successful I am um, with getting progress done on my whips. I don't know if I want to do a certain number of... Focus on a certain number of whips... Um, but that's kind of how I got to where I got this afternoon where I want to look at the ones that I've started that have some great progress on them and see which ones I can reasonably assume that I can finish in 2019. Um, before I get too deeply into that, I'll go ahead and show you the last one I worked on this week, which was my Friday night stitching piece. For Desiderata, I can tell you right now what my progress was. Was and it was five words. I did five words since I showed you my update last Saturday. Surrender, surrendering the things of youth. Oh no, no, I did get a little bit of this running stitch border done. So this last line where it says surrendering the. I'm reading backwards and in reverse. Things of youth and then this running, double running stitch over here. That's what I got done. So basically that last line. And that's because I was watching Call the Midwife. And when I say I was watching Call the Midwife while I was stitching, I was watching it. Um, and scrolling through Facebook and Instagram and messaging people and doing all the things other than stitching. So that's why we only have what we have, but it's totally fine. It's what happens, right? So that's the Sidorata, and I will shut that down until next week. So now we're getting into the trunk show. Trunk show slash whip parade slash I don't know what my next whip is going to be, so we're going to find out together right now. I pretty much have an idea, kind of, what I want to work on. And I'm just not sure, but I'm going to show you guys anyway. So the first one, and I'll show you the, the project bags that they're into just for funsies. This first one is an oldie but goodie with a sad tail to it. So first, I'm going to show you. The project back that was in that it's in this was a 
love gift and it is to this day one of my all-time favorite project bags simply because of how gorgeous the fabric is um the individual that gave it to me said that she had the fabric wasn't quite sure what to do with it then she thought of me and she knew and she gave me this bag while we were at the new jersey cross stitch retreat together um and this is from the lovely Diana from It Is Kismet Stitches. Um, there is a huge pattern right here because you can see through it, but you, you can't do anything with this. I'm just showing you the front of the bag. So this is one of the vinyl see-through bags. But look at that gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. I absolutely loved her for thinking of me. Um when she made this bag and for giving me something that I can hold on to for years to come. Um, and this is the beautiful interior with gold polka dots. I don't even know if she knew I loved polka dots. I just love this bag. So thank you, Diana. So what is in here is tribal monkey, my beloved tribal monkey that, um, the last time I worked on this was in ginger Gerald's living room with Caroline. It's the last time I worked on it. Last time I touched it. Um, so given that timeline, what I do know is you guys have not seen um, Tribal Monkey since the beginning of this year, if not last year. But what you may have seen if you follow me on Instagram some time ago is the unfortunate mishap with reading the um, dimensions that were needed Um for the fabric, I always say this backwards. The dimensions that I read, let me look at it, because I always get this messed up with exactly what I did to mess this up. Um, I think I looked at the size of, it says, right, size for 14 count Ada and 28 count even weave is 19.7 times 17.4 inches. Um, I'll show you. It. This is from Y Auto Cross Stitch. So you see, that's the size. That's what I read. Size for 14 count Ada and 28 count even weave, right? 19.7 times 17.4. So common sense tells you you're going to get a piece of 14 count Ada or even weave, 28 count even weave, 18 by 18, right? Or what is that? 18 by 20, which is a fat quarter. So I got a piece of 28 count even weave or linen actually I used the antique violet from or antique lilac from XJU design what that actually was was the size of the stitched design not the size of the fabric um, which is a little bit disappointing because you saw it just like I did it clearly says that's the size for the fabric right so when I got my fat quarter of even weave, 28 count linen rather, which is 18 by 27, it's big enough, right? No. The monkey's face, the design size is 18 by 20. So there's no way on God's green earth that this is going to fit on a fat quarter and that's the funny thing everybody was like he's gonna be huge he's gonna be huge and I'm like yeah he is he is and finally I realized this is one quarter or one half of his forehead and that's the end of the fabric how in the world is this gonna fit and that's when I looked at it again I looked at it again I looked at the the pattern itself and that's when I realized that is not the size of the fabric as written on the on the cover of the pattern. That's the size of the design. So unfortunately, this is this is trash. There's no way I can salvage this. He will never fit. So I'm gonna figure out something to do with this guy because I absolutely still love the stitching right here. It's colorful, it's beautiful. I just don't know what I'm gonna do with it. But I, I can't do anything else with it. 
Um, I thought about making it into a biscornu. I thought about taking maybe this portion of it. Um, let me fold it up a little bit. Like fold over the little unstitched portion and just take this portion and maybe making it into a little pouch. You know what I mean? There's, I'm going to do something with it. I'm not going to throw this in the trash. I just don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. So that being said, obviously I need to restart, needed to restart um, Tribal Monkey. Um, so I did. And he got a complete and total facelift. He's also quite wrinkled right here. Um, but what I have not done is is much at all. The last time I worked on this, like I said, I was I was in Ginger Gerald's living room and it was in June. It's the last time I touched it. Um, trying to get the orientation right because I don't know. Let me see. I want to make sure I hold it up so you can clearly see it. Okay, so that's his nose. So this is the bridge of his nose. Okay. So I gave him a facelift. I completely changed the, the fabric color. This is something I got from the New Jersey retreat. Uh, silk weavers, something or another. I don't remember. Um, this is the bridge of his nose. And is it upside down? It is upside down. So, yeah. This circle is the bridge of his nose. This is going toward the outline of his eye. Um, so that's right here. That's where we are. And it's also 25 count. So it's a lot smaller because as we know, it is going to be huge. I don't need a 19 by 20 or 19 by 18 monkey head. I don't even know what I would do with that. So this is on 25 count, so it'll be significantly smaller. Um, and this, you know, I got a, when I was in the Color and Cotton Fabric uh, Threads of the Month Club, I guess I slid it in the bag and now I have this stupid residue on the front of the pattern. But this is what he's going to look like. So this is where we are. So even though the colors are kind of blending in right here, he is full coverage completely. Um, so those other colors, like the blues and the purples and the pinks, they'll, they'll pop a little bit more. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I like the gold fabric. Um, I will most likely, when I frame it, use a matte. Um, that's kind of like this blue color, something that'll that'll really make it jump off. Um, not sure, not sure why I'm even thinking about mats when all I have is that dot right there. Um, this is the one I think I'm gonna work on for the next two weeks because I, I was hurt. I was hurt. I was upset about my poor tribal monkey, um, and I think that might be why I haven't worked on him in so long. Or as much I think I had you know some residual um, resentment about what happened I was, I was it's too dramatic to say I was bitter I wasn't bitter um, but I was hurt because that's a lot of beautiful stitching but it's not lost this will go this will go somewhere that something will be done with this if you guys have any ideas about what I could do with this I would love to hear them I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, what I do not want to do is put any additional work into stitching this piece, this section that's not stitched. I honestly, it's, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. But I think there's a lot that can be done with this section that is stitched. I just don't know what. A pin cushion, maybe? I would love to hear your ideas. So let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know. And that is Tribal Monkey. So this is where it started when I pulled out my whips because I'm like, okay, um, I had Tribal Monkey in the back of my mind. I know in my last video I said I was going to work on good in everything, um, where all I started was the quote from Maya Angelou, but 
I wasn't sure I wanted to be fiddling around with all those trees in this whip, in this whip rotation. So that's why I was thinking of tribal monkey. Um, I'm picking my nail polish. I'm, I'm, what am I doing? Anyway, squirrels. Um, so this is at the top of the list, but let's see what else we came up with. So the next one I pulled out, this was from one of the bags of the month this year. I think this was for Valentine's Day. This was for February from So Much to Love. And this houses my old friend, Hoity Toity. Now, Hoity Toity, I had this pattern um, for a while because I was going to start it in July with Caroline. I think she started this on her birthday. So I know I had it ready to start in July with her uh, for her birthday start to celebrate her birthday start with her. But technically I started it in June in at the floss tube retreat. Um, because I think Jen talked to me, Jen from Felicity Stitches. I am 99% sure she talked me into starting this with her because I brought it with me either I brought it with me or kitted it up let needle workers delight but I didn't have the pattern I didn't have the pattern with me it was at home um so I worked off of the first page of her pattern I think she bought it at needle workers delight um so I had the pattern so she didn't do anything wrong but she made me a copy of page one to get it started with her on that day and clearly I didn't start it on this. Um, this is just a piece of 25 count Lugana. So I thought I started it that day. Didn't I? And here's another piece of 25 count Lugana with not a single stitch on it. And this is actually terracotta. This is the same fabric that I'm using for Pot for Dickie. Jen, didn't I start that with you that day? I thought I did. I remember putting in like a couple of stitches. So maybe this is what I actually had kitted up at home. And maybe I just use another piece because I know I started it that day with you. I know I did. Maybe it's just not in here. I don't know what I did. I know I started it that day with you, though. I didn't get very far, did I? Um, no idea. So, I guess we won't be putting this into the whip pile, will we, folks? Because the whip is missing. So there you go. There's Hoity Toity. And also in this bag, because apparently I like to double book my project bags, is a meager start that I had on Shades of Red by Northern Expressions Needleworks. So in here, I have the fabric for Shades of Red and Shades of Green, and I'm using 25 Count Ladonna for both, but I didn't start Shades of Green. Um, only Shades of Red, brace yourselves, for... I don't think this is going to be worked into my work rotation for next year, but it might be. There's my start. That's it. Got that in one of the bag of the month. So much to love bags. A little needle minder came with that. I think that was obviously the Easter one. We are already 39 minutes in. I am pretty sure I'm filming just a full-fledged video here. Um, there's no point in trying to add on next week to um, sorry. There's no point in trying to add on more footage to this next week because at 39 minutes I might as well just upload this sucker, right? Oh, oh look, another so much to love bag. 
owls. I think this is the same one that I sent to Emily. Or was it this one? This is where Amtrak is. Which one was it, Emily? I think this was the one that I sent to her for her birthday. Because it had owls on it. I'm almost positive because I had owls on it. Um, so we have matching bags. And in this one, I pulled this out because I've been having I have had a hankering to work on a full coverage project. And I haven't worked on this one in quite a while. And I love this one. Um, I think I have three pages done. Maybe, maybe I'm on the third page, but this is a, a full, a hade that's on a horizontal axis, not vertical. This is Funky Fish Carnival. I absolutely love, love, love this. So this is the page that I'm on now, right here. This is page three, I believe. Love this one. Let's see if I have the full printout in here. I should. But I don't know if I do, if I have the main cover. Why am I not organized, guys? Because I just pulled out a whole pile of crap that I had no intention of pulling out today. I don't have the color photo, but if I remember, I will insert a picture here. So there we have again is Funky Fish Carnival. I will absolutely be working on this next year, but um, pretty sure he is not going to be, they're not going to be up on rotation for this next two weeks. So I will keep this in the pile at the top of the trunk um, because I'm pretty sure I'll be bringing that out again next year. The next one I thought about working on, which I will be working on in my whip rotation next year is my Courtney Collection Peacock. This was gifted to me by the lovely Emily from my collective possessions for my birthday. Love, 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 love. And this one, um, this is what I'm doing the entire tale in. This is, of course it's not showing what this is. It is Karen Water Lilies. <sighs> Havana. So that's what I'm doing the tail in. And then I'm doing the rest of the peacock in black coral by dinky dyes um but i'm also going to have some metallics some metallic accents going into the tail don't know how don't know where uh, but the plan is to have this whole tail done in that havana that's the plan um now this was also the piece i think this was my first time working on 40 count um I think this was the first project that I ever worked on 40 count. Oh, she also gave me a project bag. She also had a project bag made for me. This is a really deep project bag. I absolutely love it. It holds a full 11 by 11 inch frame. It just has a zipper top. So that's where that peacock lives. Um, but going back to the fabric, I used a piece of 40 count fabric and I hand dyed it myself to make like a mottled silver, silvery gray. Absolutely love this. She also gave me the super cute pug needle minder. Um, so I'm gonna show you in a second. This is how far I've gotten. It's just one of the little, it's just part of his tail. Why doesn't this wanna focus today? It's acting up, it's showing off. All right. So there it is, and you can see, do we need light? It's awfully dark in here, isn't it? We can see 
how we're starting with the Havana, how that works up. It's pretty cool. So this is definitely what I'm going to work on in 2019. What? Oh, gosh. There you go. It's definitely what I'm going to work on in 2019. Um, but not in this whip rotation coming up, starting today. But this is one of the ones I pulled out um, that I wanted to show you guys and give some love to. Next, because there's four. This is the project bag that it's in. Clearly you can see I have a love for so much to love bags. Um, this is tiramisu by Glendon Place. And it looks like my book is completely falling apart, which is probably why I made working copies. Like, look at that. It's like completely falling apart at the edges. So this is tiramisu by Glendon Place. Mm -hmm. Using all the called for colors. I think this is 28 count Monica. Pretty sure of it. And here is where we're starting, or we started. There's a progress. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't know why. There you go. There's the progress. Mr. Bean in a dress there. So that's the progress on Tiramisu by Glendon Place. Definitely want to give that some love next year. So you will see this one again in a two-week rotation. The next up, one of my all-time favorite um, project bags as well, is from the lovely Caroline from Evertotes. Um, I think I recently showed, saw this in her store within the last few months, but this was a love gift from her that was given when she came to visit, um, Gerald. So I love this bag. And what's in here? This is the value of putting tags on your zippers. So you know what's in, in there. Um, definitely one of my favorites in here. I picked this pattern up when I was at Needleworkers Delight for the Floss Tube Retreat. And I was inspired to get this pattern by the lovely Emily C. A peacock, a, uni a unicorn, and a badger. Duh, look at that. It is full coverage from the Scarlet Letter. There's a close-up of some of the motifs. I can't determine if I actually want this light on, off. Maybe that's good. There's some of the motifs. I feel like this is smudgy. Uh, Trying to see if I have my my glass cleaner nearby. I don't. So I think this is just going to be a little off this video. It's fine. So that's this one. That's housed in Caroline's bag. I also know she loves that pattern. So it totally makes sense. Caroline, did you ever get that pattern? I think you, I know you were saying it was something you needed to have, but I don't know if you ever got it. Wow. Now this I started at the Floss Tube Retreat in New Jersey, and I can absolutely tell you with certainty, I haven't worked on it since. And I think now that I'm looking at this, this is the one that I actually started instead of hoity-toity, so I don't even know if I actually started hoity-toity. Or maybe I did, and it's hiding in another project bag, probably with something that I actually had with me on that retreat because I didn't have I didn't have my fabrics. I didn't have my flosses. But I remember starting it because I had black with me. Or maybe I just don't know what I'm talking about. Jen, are you watching? Did I start it? Do I need to look for that? Anyway, this is my progress. Almost done. Just need to get a frame. Yeah. 
So I should probably work on that this year, next year. Show that some love. This is, don't know, but this is the project bag that used to house Twisted Band Sampler. And I know that um, because I had this bag on the cruise with me. But it also housed the other project that I had on the cruise with me that I have not worked on since. But it's one of my favorites. I say that a lot, don't I? I have a lot of favorites. But this one really is one of my favorites. This right here, I think, is the pattern that made me realize just how brilliant Long Dog Samplers is. And that is Opus Magnuson. Oh, this is amazing. The blues, it's, some, it's like simple colors. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors. But look at this. Look at these creatures. Like, how brilliant is that? God, Julia just gets it right, doesn't she? She just gets it right. So here is my start. I started this on the cruise ship. I'm pretty sure. Mm, maybe I did work on it on it on it since. I really don't know. But it's also with my beloved angry baby needle minder. Gosh, that looks so good. I hope that shows up. That variegation. Look at the brown variegation. I'm using the call for um, Gentle Arts threads. The variegation in the brown. It's really crazy. I love this one so much. Yeah, definitely need to slide that in the rotation. I don't know if it will be finished in 2019. I'm not going to be so bold as to say that. But I'm definitely going to show it some love. I wonder how many projects did I pull out wouldn't it be cool if I actually pulled out 12 projects so I could say nice and cleanly these are the 12 projects I'm going to work on in 2019 like let me say one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve holy crap wait a minute one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I actually pulled out twelve projects. I thought it was more like twenty. I actually pulled out twelve projects. There are twelve months in the year. I'm not talking about you, Diana, but it's Kismet. So maybe these will be the twelve projects I focus on next year. More to come on that later. Okay. This is the next project bag. It's got some fishies and some octopus and squid and seahorses and all kinds of creatures. Now one would think this would be the bag that holds Funky Fish Carnival. No. No, it's not. It's another Glendon place. I'm trying to pull it out so I can show you. This is Plum Pudding. The Glendon Place. Love that one. And I am doing it on Light Avocado by XGU Designs. I'll show you my progress. Does anybody else have difficulty with folding a simple piece of linen? Is it just me? All right. There's my progress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I will show that some love in 2019. Guys, did I just show you the back? I think I might have. I don't even know what I showed you. So here you go. I don't know if I just showed you the back or not. I think I did. There you go. So I will give that some love in 2019. I'm a little bit excited to think about this rotation where I just 
just so happened to pull out 12 projects and there's 12 months in a year. I'm really excited to put some thought into that because I'm a nerd in planning. This is my Paris So Much To Love bag. It used to house something that I finished. I don't remember what it was, but this is... Why did I pull this out? I don't know. This is a little Quaker-esque. I'm surprised I pulled this out. This isn't one that would normally jump out at me. I don't know. I did it for a reason, I guess. 55 minutes. Looks like we're getting a surprise video upload today, guys. I love this pattern. This is a little Quaker-esque by Blue Ribbon Designs. Excuse me for the hiccup. This is another designer that I have discovered I really like. Um, I just love, I don't know. I love the simplicity of their patterns. So this is Blue Ribbon Designs. I'll get in a little closer. You can see there is a little motif in each of them, which I thought would be fun to stitch. But I didn't get very far. I'm stitching this with some silks for you. That's what the silks looks like. Beautiful te teals and turquoise, and greens, and purple. And I'm stitching it on 40 count cream Newcastle. And that's how far I got. Oh, look at that needle minder, huh? That's how far I got. So... That's that one. Another one of my favorite project bags is my jungle bag from So Much to Love. Giraffe, and koala, and elephant, and panda bear, and cougar, and a zebra, and a baby gorilla. And then on the front, love this bag. What's in here? Oof. <laughs> that wasn't a good sign, was it? This is what I was working on. You guys have heard the story. I was working on this late one night. It was late on a Sunday night. It's like 10 o'clock on a Sunday night. Tracy P and I decided we were going to start something new. And I decided I was going to start Esther's Waves. The specialty stitch version. Which I compared to calculus. It was like doing calculus at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night. At 44 years old, where you've been out of school for too long to mention. And I couldn't pull it together. I couldn't figure out how to do Jessica stitches. And then they were done in a wave and it confused me. It was just not happening. So I immediately stopped the madness and put it back in its bag to think about what I did. So now I'm pulling it back out. You guys know I'm not afraid of a specialty stitch, but it was doing it at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night when I was tired and starting it. It was ridiculous so that's where I started two little waves two little Jessica stitches that's it and I don't even know if they're right um but I do love this pattern and I am going to continue with it I did choose um my own bead colors and I think it was the peacock colorway from Fiberlicious Threads of a hot mess but in one of my videos I showed all of these um, when I first got it so when I work on it I will pull it out and be and show you show, show them to you again when I work on it which will not be today I have to mentally prepare for that one in this one you guys might have been like where is this one I can't believe that's not in there it's in there any guesses on what I'm about to show you? It's in there. With a big old rainbow parting unicorn right there front and center. You heard it here first. Blue Moroccan Lace. I'm finishing this in 2019. That's where we are. That's the whole center. And there is the outermost border. This will be finished in 2019. Okay. 
Now, I just realized that what is not in this perfect pile of 12 that I pulled out is my Jacobian bell pull, my Erica Bidou. They are not in there. But we will find a way. But I do believe that these will be my 12 focuses for 2019 because it's meant to be if I just pulled out 12 of them randomly two weeks before New Year starts. It's meant starts. It's meant to be. Um, so as you know, I'm not holding myself to any promises, but I am obviously focusing on my wits next year. Um, trying not to do any new starts. I thought about New Year, the New Year start, because I always do a New Year start. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna. I think I'm going to choose one of these thoughtfully um, about what do I want to be the first stitch in the new year. It may very well be Esther's Waves because that has the most minimal progress and that's the piece that I was most frustrated about at the time that I started it. So it would be like a new start actually, but obviously it won't be. Excuse me. And I think I just called it. I think my first stitch of the new year will be Esther Esther's Waves. I'm pretty sure that is what I will do. Um, I also normally do a new start on my birthday. I may not do that, but what I will plan to do is work on the piece that Emily gave me on my birthday. Um, even if I already worked on it earlier in the year, that's the piece I will celebrate on my birthday. Um, because it was given to me for my birth on my birthday or for my birthday. It was given to me for my birthday. Um, and I'm going to celebrate it as such. So I think I just showed you the 12 whips I'm going to work on in 2019. And I'm pretty excited about that. So this has been over an hour already. This was meant to be one of my quick little 15, 20 minute Saturday morning updates. It is now quarter to three. Um, <laughs> It's no longer Saturday morning. I haven't eaten yet. I'm a little bit hungry. So, and I have a, a big mess next to me and a sleeping cat. Life is good. Um, so yeah, I'm almost positive that this might be my last video this year. Um, next week is next Saturday. It's the Saturday before Christmas. I don't see myself having enough of an update next Saturday for a full video. Um, and the Saturday after that is the last Saturday of the year. So we'll see. But this is probably my last update for this year. Um, I think this whole Saturday update thing is working out. I don't know if you guys, you guys have noticed, but I've been a little consistent with uploading the videos here. huh? So I think that's working. I think that's helping. Um... And I just kind of saved them up until I have a juicy video, right? So I think that's it. I thank you guys for watching, for all of your support. If we don't see each other um, before the year is out, I wish all of you guys the best year of your life next year. I hope it's filled with peace. I hope it's filled with happiness. I hope it's filled with love. I hope it's filled with stitchy goodness. I hope all the things for all of you. Um, and I wish the same for myself. So with that being said, be kind to yourselves, be kind to one another. Happy New Year. Love you all. And I'll see you next time.